it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics, back with another Quilt As You Go project from June Taylor. And we have been having so much fun between placemats, table runners, we have these adorable towels, and now the inspirational mug mats. It's a set of seven. Six are behind me and one is here. This is the one we'll be making together. And I just love being able to have inspirational sayings out and cute little just kitchen decor items, things for like a breakfast nook, a breakfast area. So this is all coordinated out of the Make Yourself at Home collection by Maywood Studios by Camberbell Designs. And we have just had a great time with these really fun and very homey theme fabrics. So um, when you get your kit, of course, you can just buy the mug mat kit and use your own fabrics. Or if you're in love with the uh, Make Yourself at Home collection, we have this kit available as well. But when you get your batting kit, you'll get, of course, instructions, which are outstanding, always full color instructions inside it. You'll have your inspirational phrases and then your batting. The first thing you'll do is just cut your batting pieces apart. And around each one of your mug mats, you'll cut a quarter inch perimeter and you'll have a backing fabric. Now, in the instructions, they recommend using a basting spray to put that backing on the back of your printed batting. We find that just the nature of batting itself just kind of clings. So it's not necessary. Um, we found that it just kind of hangs on all by itself, but if you prefer to have a spray basting on the back, go ahead and do that. So we've cut out, like I said, cut a quarter inch all the way around. And the reason I chose this one today versus the other behind me is it's a little bit different in that the flying geese on the sides and then the flying geese along with the squares on the side are pre-assembled. That's different than any of the June Taylor projects we've done before. And one of the things I really appreciate about the way June Taylor printed their batting, just to cue you that it's a little bit different with this one, is normally you're seeing solid lines everywhere. On this particular one, where there's pre-assembly required, they have dash lines to just let you know that they'll do a little bit of pre-assembly before you're going to be sewing that to the center inspirational square. And of course, all of that's included in the instructions as well. So um, as you would expect, you're gonna cut out your inspirational phrases right on the dash line. No problem pressing all that out. June Taylor does recommend that you don't iron your batting at this point. It does sometimes come out of the package a little bit wrinkled, but you know when you unfold it and just let it relax, most of that goes away. You can also just smooth that out. Now that I have that centered around my background, step one is we went ahead and we fussy cut our center and that's just gonna go right down and that's piece number one. If you've done any June Taylor projects before, you know that they're literally numbered in the sequence in which you will do that step. So step one would be just placing that inspirational phrase down to the middle. Notice steps two are now that piece block. So let's go ahead and we'll move on to that right now. And we'll talk about how to make a flying geese block. And if you've done any quilting, I bet you've done plenty of flying geese blocks. And today I'm gonna to show you a really cool a tool that we found. It's been out for a while, but we keep finding more and more ways to use it, and that is the corner clipper ruler. Now, before I jump into that, if you don't have that on hand or you just want to get this done today, then I'll just show you how to do the simple technique to make a flying geese. You have your rectangle. This is a two and a half by four and a half. All of those measurements are inside your instructions, and you have two squares that are two and a half inch each. To do the traditional flying geese assembly, you'll have your rectangle right side up, your squares are right side down, and you'll place that on one end or the other. I'm gonna place that on the right end. You will use a marking tool, just a ruler, and say a friction pen, and you'll just draw a line. And then you would sew straight on that line, cut away a quarter of an inch to the right of your sewn line, and then you would turn and press and you'd repeat that for the other corner. That's traditional assembly of how to make a flying geese unit. Now with this particular tool, which I love, the corner clipper starts and it goes all the way up to five inches. So you can make a variety of sizes using this one creative grid ruler. And I love that it has the grippy 
little stickies on the back. So my ruler really does not move around once I start, once I place it. So I feel very steady about that. We mentioned that we're using two and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna come right down to my two and a half inch. There's a line running horizontally and also a line running vertically. So all I need to do is get my square right where it belongs, kind of fill in that corner, and I'm gonna come to my two and a half. So I'm right along here, and this line is going right along the edge of my fabric, and we'll just make a cut, and we'll go straight over to our sewing machine, and we'll sew, sew a standard quarter inch seam allowance from here to here. So let's do that now. And I'll be using a little bit of a starter strip. In fact, I'll just use that excess fabric. I like to just get my machine going, especially if I'm going to be coming in and starting at an angle like I am here. So I'm going to come right in with my fabric now. One thing I did want to mention to you is because they recommend not pressing the batting as you go, really until everything is on top of your piece of batting, everything is assembled, and then iron. Using a little bit of sizing in your fabrics before you press and before you cut them is going to give them even more body so that when you do uh, finger press, um, it's going to stay in position. Now, I'm not sewing to batting at this point. I'm not going to be doing that at this point, so I'm okay to go ahead and iron as I normally would. I'll set my seam and then iron to press to the outside, and we'll go repeat that. Now, I've got half of that done. I'm gonna spin this around, and I know that I need to place my other square on there and I need to be sewing on this side. So I'm gonna place my ruler, or my tool, I guess I would call it, my corner clipper, where it belongs. And again, let's go sew a standard quarter inch seam. Once again, let's press to the outside and just look how beautiful and accurate that is. I love that. So let's look back, let's just look back real quick at our, our batting piece where, and again, everything is in the instructions, but just to make it easy, I'll just explain it to you and we can be looking at our sample here so we know what we're doing. You'll be, this is piece two, is this pre-assembled flying geese block. Over here is the same. You're gonna be doing the exact same thing. Now up above, we not only have a flying geese unit to create here, but notice the other two dashed lines. That's where you would with right sides together, so a quarter inch seam allowance and press, and a quarter inch seam allowance and press. Now I've done that ahead of time, and I wanted to point out one thing that may be a little bit different than what you would have expected. Normally if I was doing a unit like this, I would always press to this side because this is where the bulk is. In this instance though, because once I sew these, right sides together. In fact, let's do that. And you'll see, you'll see why I needed to press inward, which is not what you would have expected. But since this unit, the center, has to stay there, and I need to sew my quarter inch seam allowance, when I press, I only have one option. I have to press to the right. Therefore, these seams up here and here have to be pressed toward the center. That's why we press that way. Now I'm gonna go ahead 
and I am going to pin this and I'm going to make sure because see how my presser foot could actually catch that little flap. I'm going to press this. I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to repeat that over here where I'm going to, I'm going to pin it and I'm going to press that. Notice this little intersection. Your machine, your quarter inch needs to pass right at the tip of that intersection and when you do, your points will be perfect. Let's do one of those together and I might do the other one off camera just to save us a couple minutes. But let's go do that. And I'm going to pin from this side because I don't want to have to remove my pins as I pass through that area. Get that exactly where I want it to be. All right, let's go do that. See how, here's my machine coming, right? I'm gonna pass right through that. Let's take a quick look. So the seam, now you can see it's very obvious, I don't have a decision to make. There is only one place for that to go. This is where I'm going to use my roll and press. I love this tool from Clover. I can't be using my iron right now. They're recommending we don't do that. We don't want to distort anything, right? And we're going to do the same thing. Let's make sure our points are going the right direction. So I'm going to sew pin, sew a quarter inch, press to the outside, then and I'll talk you through this because I'm going to go do this off camera. Here, we'll be bringing this. And notice we'll have these beautiful nesting seams because my seam here is going this way. This one's going that way. Again, we're going to make sure we cross through that intersection. And we'll be pressing out that way and pressing out that way. I'm also then going to come in and do the sides. There's no mystery. We've done stuff like that before. I want to get through this because I want to show you the batting, which is, or excuse me, the binding, which is unique on this project. Once I have that together, I'm just going to be coming in and doing my sides and pressing to the outside. So when I come back, that's going to be done. And then I'm going to show you how to do the binding, which is different than we've done in the past. So I'll see you when I get back.
So I've sewn everything down. I went ahead and pressed, and one, one other step I did off camera, and this is per the instructions inside the pattern, is to trim your backing to be one inch, and that one inch measurement will be from the edge of the batting itself. And you'll just do that all the way around all four sides. Now, the binding, unlike a quilt where the binding is a separate piece of fabric, here we'll be using the backing to wrap around and be our binding. It's kind of a self-binding unit here. So step one, and again, they've done a really good job of explaining that inside the pattern, is you will fold your fabric in until it reaches the edge of your batting. You can give a press there if you'd like, but you're just gonna fold it one more time all the way over, and then they do mention to go ahead and press and pin at that point. I love using my Wonder Clips, so I'm gonna use those instead of pins. I certainly use them anytime I'm binding a quilt or trying to hold something together. All right. Now in the corner, I want you to take note of this because I actually, when I was making uh, one of the samples, kind of struggled with this step. So I want to explain it to you real well so that you can just breeze right through this. Is down in the corner, uh, they mentioned here in step three to go ahead and fold this 45, so it's going to have a 45 degree angle going this way. And you don't want to go too far. You're just going to fold that until again, it reaches the edge of that batting, but don't go further. And just for, this is something I learned, or it seemed to help me, was go ahead and give that a good press. It's just one last thing you have to hang on to at this point. So that's kind of in position, and you'll repeat that step. The first fold will be to the edge of your batting, and then all the way up. And you see how it makes that really nice corner right there, that nice miter. So I'm actually gonna press that whole edge. I just think every time I add a little press, it just gives me that more crisp, that crisper edge. All right, and let's fold it up one more time. And I wanna show you that corner. See how that just comes together beautifully? Boy, that, that iron wants to steam right now in a big way. And we'll keep pressing all the way down. And again, we'll clip. Whenever you're using Wonder Clips, notice the profile. It's flat on the bottom and you have a curvature at the top. So the, the clear side, the flat side will be on the bottom. So it'll ride smoothly along your sewing machine table. And so we have that nice miter in the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that. And then you will just continue all the way around and folding all the way around. And then, of course, you'll be coming in with a blue thread. I'd be changing this out. This is a confetti 50 weight cotton. We have a neutral set. It's the white, gray, and black. It's perfect for piecing really anything. But of course, whenever you're wanting to do some top stitching, you'll be wanting to use some coordinating thread. And I come in with a, a nice navy blue and just sew with about an eighth of an inch inside of here all the way around. And that's how you make your inspirational mug mats. The thing I figured out when I first figured out there was seven, I'm like, well, that just seems like a strange number. And then Tammy said, Jen, hello, one for every day of the week. So I love that idea. You could put out a new mug mat um, for every day of the week. And it's just, again, just kind of a little bit of sunshine and, and positivity to add to your day. So if you want to give this a go, I'm telling you what, you're going to have a great time. We have more videos coming your way. If you are not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, just do that now. And that way you'll be the first to know when we have new projects available for you. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.